This Valentine's Day, we engage in a love affair with basketball. Welcome to Park Center High School in Brooklyn Park for a Northwest Suburban edition of High School Girls Basketball. We've got a couple of teams that hope to play the Dark Horse card in Section 5-4A. You have a Red Hot Park Center team, winners of five in a row, against a Spring Lake Park Panthers team that would love to pick up some momentum heading into section play with their plethora of college-bound athletes. Greetings, everyone. I'm Mike Bean, and here I am all by myself talking to myself. That's chaos theory. It's been a few years since we were last at Park Center. You may remember their lore, their history, the likes of Kayla McMorris, Michaela Hayes, and Simonette. More recently, Adalia McKenzie, the first and so far only woman to earn Miss Basketball. Of course, she's now playing at Illinois. Since that time, Park Center has gone through quite a lean period. They're hoping to finish above 500 for the first time in several years, and they're in prime position to do that. Tyler Coley in his first year as head coach at Park Center coming over from Maranatha, and he has his team on a roll. There aren't any superstars for Park Center that will go off for 30, 40 points a game, but it is tough to key on one specific player. You've got seniors like Miriam Alawunle, Jalea Diggs, Brianna Foster, the eighth grader, and Lyric Singleton. Any one of them can put in a big performance, and their record against teams this year, their ability to take on some of the teams they're expected to beat, suggests that whatever happens, there will be a strong foundation to perhaps return the Pirates to prominence, something they held all the way through the mid-2010s. Spring Lake Park, it's the first time we have seen them on the TSB television airwaves. You might have seen them on North Metro TV and other avenues. They're under 500, but not for lack of athleticism. In fact, four of their seniors are all going to play college ball, several of them in multiple sports at the D3 level. They include Bella Such, who passed 1,000 career points a couple weeks ago. She will play track and basketball at Gustavus and Gustavus right now running the tables in the Mayak. Olivia Kesti, Bree Nussbaum, a couple of other players to keep an eye on and Rhea Cassidy will play at St. Kate's. So even though Spring Lake Park may not have the headliners like Maple Grove or other teams in Class 4A, They've got a lot of players who are versatile and can put in some solid performances. They will need that tonight, and staying out of foul trouble will be key if they want to get a win against Park Center. We'll be back for the starting lineups. You're watching High School Girls Basketball. Twin City Sports Broadcasting and a whole lot more. That's what you get from TSB Television. We provide long-lasting digital coverage of your favorite athletes from the preps to the pros. Dazzling moves. Holloman, good if it goes. Yes! Game winners. James. She's in trouble. Finds James. Toss shot! It goes in! And everything in between. Before we let you go, do you want to say hi to anybody? Oh, oh I don't know. That put me on the spot there. If you want to connect with our audience, visit us at patreon.com slash TSB television or sponsor our coverage through PayPal and Cash App. Thank you for watching. Welcome back to Park Center in Brooklyn Park. Park Center aptly named for its equidistant location between Brooklyn Park and Park Center. Again, a lot of history at this school in both girls and boys hoops. Boys basketball winning a state title in 2022 and in position to perhaps do so again this year. The girls trying to build their way back up, but right now it is time for the parents to get their salutation. It is parents night and here they come. Because if it wasn't for the parents, these kids wouldn't exist. That, that's kind of how it works. <laughs> so the parents are heading down courtside to receive their flowers, literally and figuratively, from their athletes. And that'll give us a little more time to break down the matchup in more detail. We 
mentioned in the open, no explosive scores. Nobody has scored more than 26 points in a game this season. But the trajectory for these two, a little different. Spring Lake Park, they've lost three of their last four, including a tough one to Maple Grove, and then more recently a 10-point loss to Blaine. And here come the cards and a message. It is Valentine's Day. I've jokingly said Valentine's Day is the bane of every broadcaster because it can be tougher to find crew members uh, with all the couples who create a special occasion. Oh, okay, someone else is at the public address table. I thought we had a wireless mic. But you see athletes like Morgan Sanders, Miriam Alawunle. I think those are the seniors. Tiana Lloyd, yes. Had a chance to get a hold of or speak with, didn't get a hold of her. I spoke with Miriam Alawunle beforehand. She's looking to go the JUCO route to continue playing basketball. Her family had quite the lineage in track. All right, so the parents got their flowers and photos and all the other pomp and circumstance that comes with this night that is February 14th. And now the starters are being introduced. Again, Spring Lake Park, they've had some rough seas. They lost five in a row. Recently, they've lost three of their last four. They're hoping to bounce back. This is the only time these two will meet. A reminder, in the Northwest Suburban, they changed the scheduling procedures, so teams only have to play each other once. They can opt to play a second time, but it would count as a non-conference game. Park Center, Winning five in a row, Osseo, Minneapolis South, Minneapolis Henry, Tatino Grace, and Rogers. Maple Grove in their section, and they are gonna be the team to beat. Tyler Coley is hopeful that a win over Spring Lake Park would be enough to put this team into the two spot in section 5-4A. It may be Maple Grove's section to take this year, but the way Park Center has come together and bounced back after several lean years suggests there will be a lot of optimism in the years to come. A lot of youngsters that are part of this lineup. And with the starters introduced, let's recap them for you. For Spring Lake Park, it's Brianna Nussbaum, Rhea Cassidy, Olivia Kesti, Brooke Gorish, and Bella Sutch. For Park Center, Miriam Alawunle, Lyric Singleton, Brianna Foster, Jalia Diggs, and Anaya Shafa. Shafa and Foster, eighth graders, Diggs the freshman. And for Spring Lake Park, Bella Such, she's going to Gustavus, Kesti going to Augustana, the Division II school out in Sioux Falls, Rhea Cassidy, St. Kate's, Brianna Newsbaum, St. Mary's. So four college commits on that roster. As we documented in the open, it may not draw the headlines like the Hopkins teams of yesteryear did, but it's encouraging and wonderful to see so many take up that route D3, D2, wherever, and several of them plan to play multiple sports. Newsbomb and such among them. Park Center in the green, Spring Lake Park in the white, and we invite you to be our Valentine this evening. Because when it comes to basketball, let's just say, it's like a magic man. And speaking of magic, Rhea Cassidy drops a three-pointer. And if you're picking up on some of these references early on, uh, uh, you might have a sense of where this broadcast will be going. The three from Lyric Singleton was offline. Spring Lake Park going to Such. Lobs it. That's Noose Bomb a little too far underneath, but she draws the foul and will shoot two. Noose Bomb averaging 10.8 points per game. 
Her favorite show is One Tree Hill, a three-sport athlete. Volleyball, basketball, and softball. Nussbaum is on the board. Split at the line for Nussbaum. And a dead ball rebound to Spring Lake Park. As you can see, it's a tight fit here at Park Center. That has been the case for years. We've been on hand for a lot of games here. That was such. The Barracuda draws the foul. Such to the line, leading the team in scoring at 17.1, knocks down the front end. Bella Such, 1,000 point score, and also an alto saxophone player at Spring Lake Park. She and Jordan Odie have that in common. Such has played the alto saxophone for eight years, so maybe she could give us a saxophone rendition of some of these songs I'm referencing. We have a foul, it's on Kesty, and drawing it is Jalea Diggs. The freshman will go to the line to try to get the Park Center Pirates on the board. Diggs, rocks in the front end. Diggs, small in stature, but she has a promising career ahead of her, averaging 11.8 points per game. Five foot five, and that might be generous. But kind is just a number, as I have said more than once. It's a split for Park Center, so it's six to one. Spring Lake Park leads, Such, out of the high post. Traverses across. This is Gorish, traveling violation. There is a little disruption there. And Park Center will take over. And they are having some fun with this. I guess they don't need cheerleaders. Park Center, they uh, take care of that themselves. Dribble drive and the finish. I believe that was Alawunle. And it's six to three. Cassidy, the runner, not there. Ball rolls out of bounds. Park Center will take over. This is Shafa. Over the shoulder throw to Foster. Recovered by Singleton. Alawunle, bounce pass. And Park Center coughs it up. Early in the first half, 15.55. Again, this is the first time we have ever covered Spring Lake Park on TSB television. You've seen Park Center earlier this year. Kesty called for the walk when they dismantled Minneapolis North. In that game, North didn't have their top score available and Park Center turned that game into their own personal playground. Our camera guy, Sam, was there for that one, and I think he's still recovering from it. Baseline, Singleton, cut off. Diggs, swings out, three on the way. Not quite. Jump ball, the arrow favors Spring Lake Park. Spring Lake Park. 
You might have seen them a few times on North Metro TV. All three of their schools have feline mascots. Spring Lake Park's outlet was swiped away. Nothing at all, Park Center says. Digs for three, got it. Park Center brings the double. And they force the timeout. 6-6 six, six the score as Park Center is hoping to create a little magic of their own. If they can't find a magic man, they'll pull a rabbit out of their own hat. When the high school season is over, TSB Television goes on the highlight trail. Our highlight reels provide you with a valuable resource for recruiters and a keepsake of your favorite athlete. To learn more about our highlight reel services, contact us at tsbtelevision at gmail.com. On the Spring Lake Park side, I spoke with Randy Etherton, and there's an acknowledgement that Maple Grove is going to be the heavy favorite to take the section. It's going to require a lot of effort and a lot of things to go right for one of these two to make that run, but you never know with single elimination play. Such receives the lob, tries the post up. Didn't quite get the angle set in time. Here come the Pirates. Such races down for the rejection. Nussbaum will shoot two. Nussbaum, our One Tree Hill fan. We'll go back to the line. Nussbaum averaging 10.8, her season high 22. Fourteen thirty-seven left in the first half. Northwest Suburban Conference action. I was going to finish up. So North Metro TV, all three of their schools have feline mascots, Centennial, Blaine, and Spring Lake Park. Anytime those three play each other, they're referred to as cat clashes. We do not have such a clash tonight. Three from the wing, that's a little long from Shapa. Rebound, snagged by Singleton. Diggs fires off the back iron, Alawunle. Picks up the board, the 15-footer, swish. Brianna Foster fosters a pair into the park center column. And I'll show myself out again. Panthers, I thought Cassidy was going to launch. Looked a little deep from that range. Such, back to Cassidy. She'll work off the screen, now fire the three. It's long, rebound Singleton. Strolling up the court. Keeps the dribble alive. Shafa, bounce pass inside to Alawunle for two. Miriam Alawunle, the 5'11 senior. Singleton gets the deflection. Preventing Spring Lake Park from executing a possible fast break opportunity. And we're going to get some substitutions coming in, including Kendall Krause, the ninth grader for Spring Lake Park. We'll get all the names and numbers as we make our way through. Atlantis Brown, another senior, out on the floor for Park Center. And the Pirates. Getting after it down low. Pass deflected by Newsbomb. I also see Tiana Lloyd, another one of the seniors. Park Center calls timeout, 13.06 left. In the first half, 10-8 the score. And both teams have used a timeout in the other going. It's a 30 second timeout. That gives us a chance to share a few more notes about these players. 
They've made a few changes from the breakdown book, but Brianna Foster, who is one of the starters, part of the primary rotation, considers herself, well, I shouldn't say considers, she is a pescatarian. If you don't know, those are people who stick to a primarily fish diet and avoid other meats. Also takes up track and field. And Park Center, I feel like I got a profile of the entire team. There were a couple of changes between the publication and the start of the season. Alawunle looking for the post up on Such, can't get the bounce. And the rebound snagged by Gorish coming out of the timeout. Kraus, guarded by Diggs, has some height, finds Nussbaum on the cut, and she banks in the short range J. Nussbaum with her first field goal, and we are even at 10. It's not updated on the board, but I'm looking at the numbers here. It is 10-10. Hopefully someone will correct that. Alawunle. Tried to lob it to Atlantis Brown, but lost her grip just as she released it. Nussbaum, another dribble drive. This time, unable to finish. Alawunle to Singleton. Got to be careful. I saw a player, a Singleton misses the three. I saw a player step out of bounds during a set. 10-10 is the score. They still have not addressed it on the board. Such was looking for the three. It was swiped away, kick ball. Now the score has been corrected. It is 10-10. That's why I keep my score sheet, folks. Eleven thirty-nine left in the first half. Kendall Kraus with the inbound. Kesti. To Gorish. That's number eleven, Kylie Edwards. Shot clock running out. The runner off the back iron. I saw some contact, but we play on. Singleton underneath Such right there for the denial. Park Center 11 and 11, Spring Lake Park 9 and 13. Diggs for three. Just a tad long. Rebound. Is that a what? No, a jump ball. Park Center with the arrow. Tiana Lloyd did take a brief slide, but not enough to warrant the traveling call. Morgan Sanders checking into the game for the first time. Diggs, seven to shoot. Whoa, they're gonna call that a jump. And everyone's all right, no animosity. From here, I thought Krause might have grabbed Tiana Lloyd around the horse collar, the shoulder, neck, that area, but she was able to keep her hand on the ball. And I don't have the best vantage point from up here. but the officials certainly do. That went off the leg. It will stay with Spring Lake Park. As Kesti spotted that and decided to let it roll out of bounds. Give Spring Lake Park a chance to reset with 10.32 to go. We've been stuck at 10 for a little while. With a pair of under the radar teams.
Kraus, doubled. Getting into the cookie jar. Was Park center and digs. No finish, Lloyd was fouled. After getting the rebound, Diggs and Brown creating the turnover, and Lloyd dashing in to give Park Center another chance. Hold up, they have to signal the foul first. And then you can check in. Spring Lake Park getting a little ahead of themselves there. Shot clock at 35. Mayberry travel, that's Harmony Mayberry. You'll see a couple of other players check in during the second half, including Demi Holman, who plays a lot of JV and will play a half of varsity, as you may know. At the high school level, you can play up to three halves in a game, which they'll usually do for players that are maybe not quite up to snuff on varsity or if they need a little more practice time. Dribble drive, and banking it in is Nussbaum. She's got seven, and it's 12-10. Spring Lake Park over Park Center. Three on the way. Such using her vertical to ensure the rebound would not leave her grip. Newsbomb finds Such on the bounce pass inside. And Bella Such collects her first field goal. 14 10. Lloyd. This is Diggs. Out to Mayberry. Three on the way, it's Sanders. And Park Center having some difficulties converting the long ball. Nussbaum saw a lane, it closed up. She'll pass back out. That's Hayden Schulman, number 32. Cassidy, Park Center swinging for the ball. It squirts out, trying to draw the foul was Krause, didn't work out. Ball's loose again and taken away by the Pirates. A little thievery from Atlantis Brown. Mayberry drills the three. Park Center will get a free ball here with 8.05 left. Mayberry, uh, old viewers, and I mean older, or those who have an affinity for the classics might remember the Mayberry from the Andy Griffith Show, which was the setting of that series, the town, the hometown. But Park Center's Mayberry, it's a showing her stuff as well, just a sophomore, so plenty of time lies ahead of her in terms of development and finesse. 14-13, Spring Lake Park ball after a missed three from Park Center. Diggs with the steal. She'll pull up from 14. Dead ball rebound to Spring Lake Park. Right now, the Pirates, it feels like watching the game with Creighton Durham Hall yesterday in their match with Woodbury, they're getting some good looks. They're just having a hard time putting them through. And as you know, if you run into trouble with your field goal percentage, that's going to be a foul on the push by Singleton. If you're having trouble with your shot selection, if those shots aren't going in, it can wreak havoc. When you shoot well, you look good. When you don't shoot well, you can run into trouble, as the old adage goes.
back and forth tilt between a couple of teams that are hoping to play the upset card in the case of Park Center, laying the foundation for future success. Spring Lake Park hoping to give a send off to their quartet of seniors who are college bound. Oh! I talk about this a lot. You don't want to commit those unforced errors and give up those freebies. Park Center takes it back. More thievery. That cookie jar better have a lock on it because folks like Diggs are going to hog them all to themselves at this rate. Diggs lays it in, gets the bounce. She's up to six, and Park Center retakes the lead. Kesti. <laughs> well, points are trying. Not fraud. Yes, missed. Brief stoppage in play with 6.37 to go. Such hesitates. That didn't work out. We got a little ring around the rosy jump ball. Park Center holding the arrow this time. Six thirty to go in the first half. And what has been a tight game. Pretty quaint atmosphere though. I haven't seen a whole lot of agitation or apprehension and certainly no apprehension on the part of Kesty, who takes that steal all the way in for two. Park Center looking for the three. They had a couple to their credit. They'll try again. Short this time. Ala Wunle tips it. Long rainbow three. Finds its way home. It's Harmony Mayberry. And what a fitting aim for a basketball athlete. 18 16. Spring Lake Park looking for the answer. Right back at you, they say. Brooke Gorish is on the board. All five starters have now scored. Mayberry out of the corner. Long skip, ooh, a bit too long. And a foul. Five twenty-four to go. Atlantis Brown will check in. We mentioned Tyler Coley. His oldest daughter, Chase, played Division I basketball at Iowa, set all kinds of blocking records at Minneapolis Washburn. Went to a couple of state tournaments. His next youngest, next oldest daughter, I should say now. We have an official's timeout with 5.16 to go. Kendall at Nebraska and coming off a huge win over Iowa on Sunday. A game that quite a few of you watched on Super Bowl Sunday where Nebraska pulled off the big upset over Iowa. I think we are having a discrepancy perhaps over the possession or the shot clock. It was the shot clock. Kendall played her high school ball at St. Louis Park, graduated early and decided to enroll early with the COVID protocols in place at the time. And one of his assist assistants, a longtime family friend, Mary Claire Francois, herself a state tournament champion with De La Salle, and has been an assistant coach with Tyler Coley at Maranatha Christian Academy and now at Park Center. The two also involved with the FBC North AAU organization, a group that just got an association with Puma. 
you probably know Under Armour, Nike, and Adidas all have partnerships with the top programs. <laughs> the public address announcer having a moment of whimsical fun regarding the shot clock. It was not set properly, so there's 10 to shoot for the Pirates. That's not going to matter, though. A jump ball, and Spindley Park with the arrow. Bella Such with another dose of sturdy interior defense. And we finish up on Mary Claire. She's been coaching. Just finished her undergraduate studies at St. Catherine and plans on a nursing career. Here's a three for Spring Lake Park. Trying to nurse their lead, but it comes up empty. This is Atlantis Brown. Lloyd has to retrieve. Tight game. The lob tipped and intercepted by Brianna Nussbaum. Nussbaum around Such, using her as a screen. Such, the rebound, and the cleanup. Our alto saxophone player of eight years. We'll try to tune up her score. More substitutions before Such takes her free throw. Such up to seven. And Spring Lake Park back up by four. I should also add, Such is also on the track team, and she will continue that at Gustavus, as we noted before. Shot put and discus are her two sports. Diggs is fouled. So the moral of the story on Such, I probably wouldn't want to mess with her. If she's doing shot put and discus, that means you got plenty of upper body strength. Mayberry to Diggs. Alawunle, such on top of her. Looking for the three. Spring Lake Park zoning up, but Diggs does get free. Rebound, Such reaching over Alawunle, but avoiding contact. Miriam took a tough hit, though Such fell on top of her. Park Center trying to recover. There's a foul, and play is going to stop. Alawunle was not run over, per se, but on this end, she went underneath Bella Such, and Bella did everything she could to avoid making contact, but Bella Such, the senior, not small in stature, and Alawunle is still on the floor, 347 left in the first half. When the high school season is over, TSB Television goes on the highlight trail. Our highlight reels provide you with a valuable resource for recruiters and a keepsake of your favorite athlete. To learn more about our highlight reel services, contact us at tsbtelevision at gmail.com. Miriam Alawunle making her way back to the Park Center bench. She'll check out for now. Looks to be all right. I don't see any lingering ailments physically as she is grimacing her lower back though maybe she got hit somewhere in that area but again she's walking on her own so the athletic trainer will take a look Tyler Coley will head over there to make sure she's okay you hope it's nothing more than a tweak and again she was able to get back up and 
make her way over to the Park Center bench. 347 left in the first half, and the foul was on Spring Lake Park. Finish up on Mary Claire Francois. We talked about her aspirations. She has a younger sister who is playing Division I basketball in New Orleans. That is Nora Francois. And both Mary Claire and Nora, longtime family friends with the Coleys, Nora and Kendall. Both graduating in the same year. Diggs takes a trip to the rim. And she goes up to eight. There's a saying that Ronnie Porter mentioned, who's now at Wisconsin, hard over height. Diggs embodying that, uh, that mantra. I was about to say philanthropy. I'm sure Diggs has a philanthropic nature about her, though. Scramble for the ball, picked up by the Panthers. Edwards to a wide open Such down low. Bella Such with nine, 24 20. Diggs to Mayberry for three. Not this time. Brown collects the rebound. Diggs. Ran into the double team on the dribble drive. Ball was stripped by number 15. I don't have her name on the roster, but I can tell you Kendall Krause gets on the board and we'll find out who 15 is. That might be Anna Smolik, but We'll find out for sure here. Shot clock did not reset. With 2.21 to go, and that gives Miriam Alawunle a chance to shake off whatever was bothering her. Bit of a free timeout. So was that a foul, or was that a shot clock? It was a shot clock. I thought it was a shot clock. 20, I did see the 2-0. Spring Lake Park also has a 20 in Kendall Krause, so. That does mix things up a bit. Diggs got fouled on the jump shot. Those are rare, but they do happen. They'll tell you that it's harder to draw a foul on the jumper than it is on the slash. And not surprisingly, I can understand why. But Jalea Diggs remains the hot hand for Park Center. Keeping the Pirates in this game on this Wednesday night, Valentine's Day. Everyone having heart-to-hearts with their significant others or family members or whatever you find to be your valentine. Pass tipped, Newsbaum. Let's come up with some defensive hustle plays and it leads to a fast break layup for Rhea Cassidy. Spring Lake Park with their largest lead of the game. Miriam Alawunle, I see, is ready to go back in or at least she's at the bench, which is a good sign. Another missed three for Park Center. Tiana Loy comes up long. And Alawunle, there she is, ready to go back in. Had a couple of buckets. Foster will also check in. And looking at the roster, Demi Holman and Atlantis Brown, the best three-point shooters for Park Center. They can get another three or two in the bucket. That might help. Alawunle trying to go for the high-low, but Spring Lake Park keeping those arms up, ready for those picks, those takeaways. Kind of giving them a boost here. Such, the post-up on Alawunle. Such going up to 11. Might have told Miriam in the metaphorical sense, how do I get you alone? Alone in the post, that is. Alawunle missed a second chance opportunity. Less than a minute to go. Park Center in a rut. Spring Lake Park 
called for the charge. Harmony Mayberry, all five feet, three inches of her. Taking contact, like we said, it takes a little gusto to go up against someone as sturdy, as rigid as such is with her basketball and track background. That's just her first, and remember, it's a team control foul, so no free throws awarded in that scenario. Alawunle out at the high post. Swarmed by Such. Three on the way. Offline again. But Mayberry collects the rebound. She'll give it another try. Diggs, extra pass. Didn't quite work out. Four second difference. Shot clock to game clock. Runner gets tipped back to Diggs. She wanted the three. Backs off. Park Center will run for one more here. Shot clock is off. Diggs. Couldn't get around the screen, and that will be a walk or a travel. It's a crucial call. Sam is saying travel. That's what I thought from up here. They're going to call it a jump ball. And Park Center with the arrow, so. Nobody wins. Or in Jeopardy, they call it a triple stumper. 4.8 for Park Center to try to get one more before intermission. And Nussbaum with the tip. She's got time. The clock didn't start. She scores. I think she would have scored anyway. But Nussbaum tipped it. The clock did not start. If I understand the rules correctly, once the ball is touched, it doesn't matter if anyone secures it, they would start the clock. In any event, Brianna Nussbaum with a huge momentum booster for the Panthers who lead 32-21 at halftime. That was quite the ending to the first half. Park Center, if they want to work their way back in this game, they'll have to find a way out of this three-point shooting slump of theirs. And they have the pieces to do it, but We'll find out in due time. We'll come back for the second half. This is High School Girls Basketball. Spring Lake Park, Leeds Park Center, 32-21. Twin City Sports Broadcasting, and a whole lot more. That's what you get from TSB Television. We provide long-lasting digital coverage of your favorite athletes from the preps to the pros. Dazzling moves. Holloman, good if it goes. Yes! Game winners. She's in trouble, finds James, toss shot, it goes in! And everything in between. Before we let you go, do you want to say hi to anybody? Oh, oh, I don't know, that put me on the spot there. If you want to connect with our audience, visit us at patreon.com slash TSB television or sponsor our coverage through PayPal and Cash App. Thank you for watching. The second half about to start here at Park Center High School. In Brooklyn Park, Mike Beatum with you for high school girls basketball. Park Center and Spring Lake Park. The Panthers going on a big run to end the first half, and they lead 32-21. The first half numbers go something like this. Bella Such leads with 11. Brianna Nussbaum has nine. Rhea Cassidy with five. For Park Center, Julia Diggs has nine points. Harmony Mayberry with six. Miriam Alawunle with four. Number 15, we believe, is Anna Smolik. So if that is correct, great. If not, uh, my apologies. Whenever you get a number that isn't listed in the program, things get a little interesting. But that's OK. The stretch run is upon us. 
A week and a half left of regular season play. And then we move on to postseason play. 32-21 the score. And Bella Sutch, after some initial difficulties, turned into a magic woman down low. I've been referencing a lot of heart songs. Again, it's Valentine's Day as of this taping. So I'm all in with the heart puns. Heart the band, that is. Spring Lake Park with the takeaway after the Aaron pass. The ball goes out of bounds. Ooh, entry pass into heavy traffic. And then a foul. That's on Shafa. That's what I call the double whammy. When you have an empty possession or a sloppy possession turnover and then commit the foul on the other end almost instantly. The double whammy and no big bucks. 32-21. Hand off. And Park Center takes it back. Diggs was right in the lane, and she'll shoot two more. Diggs with nine points. Hasn't shot all that well from the free throw line this season, just 48%. But this freshman has a whole lot of development ahead of her here. Sometimes those rebuilding projects are gradual, other times they're instantaneous. But when you are factoring in a school that graduated a lot of talent, went through some turnover the last couple of years, and saw some other players bolt to other high school programs, well, it takes some doing to rebuild. Spring Lake Park evading the pressure, such is open. Went for the lunge and was a little too strong. How about a three? Just short. Another O board. Short again. Singleton ensnares the rebound. Park Center still trying to make that three ball work and they haven't had a ton of success with it. Singleton trying to change that. Alawunle, extra pass to Diggs. That's what Park Center needs more of. Once again, Spring Lake Park with the press breaker. Elbow J off the back iron. Singleton strolling up court once more. The handoff, Diggs for three, got it. Park Center scoring on back-to-back -back possessions. They remain committed to that three ball. And it's now a five point margin. Park Center scoring six in a row to begin the second half, 15-59 remains. And if you're watching this on the TSB Television YouTube channel, we've got a few more games left. It's another busy week and a half for us. Tomorrow, we go to Hopkins for Hopkins YZ, a classic battle of late conference powers. Next week on President's Day, we go to Centennial for their game with Stillwater, and we hope to have a special guest join us in the broadcast booth. On Tuesday, we go to Hopkins one more time for their match with St. Michael Abraville, and if all goes well, our final scheduled regular season broadcast will be Park Center and Anoka. We typically don't do sections because of my involvement with other stations, including NSPN, who covers postseason games, so I needed to cover those responsibilities. And covering the lane, covering lots of ground, is Olivia Kesti. That is a great response coming out of the timeout for Spring Lake Park.
Oh, the wound lay. Count it. Miriam Alawunle with the first bucket of the second half. Brief stoppage to tie a shoe, and we don't want that. An Aaron shoelace wreaking havoc. It's Casti. And Alawunle, who averages 10.3 points per game. Doesn't shoot all that well from the free throw line, but we'll try to pick up a three point play here. And has no trouble doing so. The numbers I have Lister at 31%. Park Center almost got the steal. But the ball went over the head, and Shafa didn't realize it. Now, Spring Lake Park gets a wide open lane. And Nussbaum, Nussbaum, I should say, runs through it. And that was a big swing. What could have been a big help. Instead, back to a six point game, 36 30. We could have been looking at a one possession game. Of course, still a lot of time remains in the second half as Ala Wunle. Draws the late blocking foul on Such as she went for the wraparound move down low. That's her second personal foul. They're not keeping the foul tally on the board. putting a little too much velocity on that one. Season high, 16. And she'll take the split. Spring Lake Park getting some Opportunities in transition. 15 footer, Ricks. Park Center trailing 36 31. Singleton, dangerous lob. Newsbomb had a steal and run out to end the first half. She picks up another steal and run out here to go up to 13. Drive and kick, extra pass. Singleton, three ball. Ala Wunle, who's the foul going to be on? I thought she might have reached over, and uh, that appears to be the case. Tyler Coley, not thrilled about the call, but I thought Ala Wunle reached over initially, and I think that's what they got her with as they roll up the curtain. Park Center Wrestling finishing up their practice. State Wrestling isn't too far away. Kesty. Diggs pries the ball away again. Park Center doing enough on defense to give themselves some opportunities. And they will try again at the free throw line. Looking ahead for the Pirates. They've got a big game with Andover. And then they have two more games at home. As the gym falls silent for Diggs who is Having quite the second half here. Julia, her season high is 23. She's already up to 16. An undersized kid. Well, anyone that's under 5'6 is undersized, even at the guard spot. But again, whether it's someone like Diggs, Ronnie Porter, or Tamika Johnson, who has done quite well for herself. It's not always about height. Spring Lake Park, they've been thriving in the transition game. Park Center playing a little more aggressive 
going for the traps. And when you do that, it runs the risk of more press breakers on the other end. Miriam Alawunle tagged with a third personal foul. And shooting free throws here is Brooke Gorish. Gorish with just one three-pointer in the first half. Makes both. Spring Lake Park, eight of nine. And once again, they extend the lead to seven, 40-33. seen a lot of players grace us here in conference out of conference this was an annual visit for us for several years Alawunle can't get the bounce was able to get some separation on such and then such swarmed Spring Lake Park has numbers again Oh my, Nussbaum tripped. And Diggs leaves it empty. Wow, those are the plays you really want to have. A three, that could have been a huge backbreaker. Park Center fans wanted to travel. Spring Lake Park loses the ball anyway, but what a wild sequence that was. Nussbaum tripped up by her own feet and then Diggs, I don't know what happened there, just with the layup. Those are the plays, and again, I say this a lot, you want to convert those short range looks. Diggs was going for a give and go, but Alawunle didn't connect with her properly. We have seen some wild and wacky situations here. Kesti inside to Such, and she draws the foul. Alawunle, can't believe it, that's her fourth, and that is going to limit her production, her effectiveness here, because you can't chance keeping her in for this long. Such to the line. We talked about her alto saxophone experience. As she goes to the line to shoot two. Also the vice president for the school's National Honor Society. And for the curious, again, such her saxophone playing is for the Spring Lake Park High School Wind Ensemble. And you'd have to think, with her, Jordan Ode, I don't know how long they'll continue playing saxophone, but those two would probably fit right into the next soundtrack uh, whenever we have a Mario Kart 9. Mario Kart 8 fans will know what I'm talking about. And even other Mario games. Backdoor play, Park Center. Needed something to go their way. Tiana Lloyd gives it to them. Such, out of the high post. Starting to draw some fouls here and will shoot two more. Such again, I think, gaining more awareness of her advantage in the low post. And she will shoot two more. Right now, Such is having some trouble converting her free throws here.
She has split her last two times at the line. Singleton out to Diggs, 42-35. This game still within striking range for Park Center, but it seems like Spring Lake Park has held the upper hand throughout ever since that run to end the first half. Sanders is fouled. Both teams with one more to give. 11-19 remains in the second half. Everyone else playing for that second seed, Maple Grove. Locked up that one seed. Far and away. Ooh. Was that a foul? No, jump ball. Park Center with the arrow. But looking at the facial expressions, I think they wanted a foul on Spring Lake Park. And I see 20. I think that was to reset the shot clock, not the foul. Demi Holman will check in for the first time. As we noted before, she plays the JV games and will play a half of varsity. And so she's put up some decent numbers. We'll hope to do the same here. Seventh grader already 5'11". Offensive rebound, Mayberry can't get the bounce. Such with the rebound. And again, Park Center, a few more threes. If they go in, we're probably looking at a different story here. Singleton tried the time to pass, almost pulled it off, but just a little late. Holman will check out as quickly as she checked in. Battle of Northwest Suburban teams. Nussbaum. Retrieve the inbound in the backcourt. You can do that as long as you don't backpedal your way there. Eight to shoot, Such with the shuffle pass to Nussbaum. Time running out. What happened there? Was that an inadvertent whistle? Jalen Bercy Dixon missed the mid-range jumper and then I heard a whistle. Did anyone see anything? Sam, you didn't see anything and I completely confused here. Which doesn't take much, admittedly. I'm easily confused, but they're gonna give the ball to Spring Lake Park. Now, are they gonna rule this a jump ball? Or they're gonna reset it to two seconds, there we go. So they're going to reset it to two seconds. I don't know how we got here, but Spring Lake Park has two seconds to shoot. Such, gets rid of it. No trouble at all. Big bucket for Such. She's got 15. Mayberry, another three. Bullseye. Dark center not giving up on those threes. I'd like to see them try to get a little more interior work. That might not be possible right now as Singleton fouls. Zeeran Bercy Dixon, the freshman. Bercy Dixon has scored a total of six points all season. So we'll see how she handles this trip to the line. Park Center also out of fouls to give.
Randy Etherton, head coach at Spring Lake Park, has seen quite a few players who would be under the radar figures in the grand scheme of things in Minnesota high school basketball, but as we said in the open, lots of multi-sport athletes. Mayberry missing the three, and Park Center, they have to think they can't keep this up, at least not at this level. They've got to find a way to work the inside. Another three goes awry and drawing the foul is Singleton. I'll say this much, they've been working the boards quite well, especially without such on the floor right now as Spring Lake Park used up their last foul to give. But if you're relying exclusively on the three, that can pose some trouble. When it's going in, it's great. But when it's not, and Mayberry, her shot sailed right, you might have to consider some other options. I know the three ball is an integral part of this sport now with the emphasis on long distance shooting. But that's my take, at least from up here. Spring Lake Park trying to take command and take initiative. Six to shoot, Kesty to Percy Dixon, her three. Bounces off the rim, rebound tipped to Mayberry who catches it in stride. Another three, and I feel like a broken record right now with the number of long distance makes, or attempts that is. We're gonna have free throws to Spring Lake Park. I know the saying, the best way to get out of a slump is to keep shooting. I still think you want to try to mix things up See if you can get that mid-range stroke or interior play to work. And force Spring Lake Park to adjust. So it's free throws, bonus time for Brianna Nussbaum, one and one as the foul was a loose ball situation. Right now, it's looking like Spring Lake Park is going to glide their way to the finish. Spring Lake Park, Robbinsdale Armstrong last year with Savannah McGowan. Diggs, the three, raises the front iron. Atlantis Brown might have been a bit premature with that. Panthers draw the foul. They'll shoot two more. This time, Brooke Gorish, who took a tumble. But Savannah McGowan, Alea Wilson out of Osseo. This conference, so many players who seemingly go under the radar. They have talent, they have college plans in mind, but it's hard to break through when you don't have the postseason pedigree, the success that your Blue Bloods do, Hopkins and St. Michael Arborville. I was talking with Randy Etherton before the game when we both had high praise for Jordan Odie who is having a terrific junior season going to Michigan State and is on the ESPNW top 60 list for her class, but no state tournament appearances to affirm that. That's a long skip. Demi Holman missing the three. Percy Dixon threw that away. 49-38 the score and Right now with Park Center seemingly relegated to the outside, if they can't get a three or two to go in, I don't see much of a path for them to get in contention and Such is going to check in at the next whistle. 
Three on the way, short. They've been getting a lot of offensive rebounds, I know that much. Spring Lake Park zoning up and seven to shoot. The way that zone, the way their long distance shots have been going, I'd say just keep this up. Noose bomb, bounce pass to Bercy Dixon. Straddles the baseline, had that one knocked away. Kesty sneaks her way into the rim for two. And she's got six. I think Spring Lake Park is ready to drop the hammer. Runner offline. Park Center scored the first six of the second half, but Spring Lake Park has completely dominated as such as hacked on the high-low play. We'll shoot two more. Looking at for Spring Lake Park. Rogers Centennial at home, and then Satino Grace on the road. They played Centennial earlier this season, lost to them, and the Cougars are going to be a slight underdog this year in Section 7, Andover with a terrific season, but they do have a couple of D1 commits in their ranks in Marissa Frost and Autumn McCall. And they've been there before, having reached state the last three years in a row and making it to the semis back in 2021. Such missing the front end. If you're curious, Spring Lake Park. They've made two state tournament appearances in school history, 1983 and 1989. So it's been a while. Miriam Alawunle back in the game, and that is a microcosm of the second half for Park Center. Seemingly nothing going right. Jump ball. Possession arrow favors Spring Lake Park. Park Center made the state tournament four straight years, got back there in 2020, knocked out in the first round. Of course, that tournament not completed because of you know what. Kesty missing the layup. I'm wondering who's been around. Alawunle. Kicks back out, burying the three is Atlantis Brown. That's her first field goal. Park Center takes a timeout. They're gonna need a little more to go their way with 6.15 left in the second half. Spring Lake Park up by 11. Twin City Sports Broadcasting and a whole lot more. That's what you get from TSB Television. We provide long lasting digital coverage of your favorite athletes from the preps to the pros. Dazzling moves. Holloman, good if it goes. Yes! Game winners. James. She's in trouble. Finds James. Toss shot! It goes in! And everything in between. Before we let you go, do you want to say hi to anybody? Oh, oh I don't know. It put me on the spot there. If you want to connect with our audience, visit us at patreon.com slash TSB television or sponsor our coverage through PayPal and Cash App. Thank you for watching. 52-41, Spring Lake Park leads Park Center. Lyric Singleton hitting the last three, or I should say that was Atlantis Brown. My, my apologies. Atlantis Brown, a cotton candy lover. And since I mentioned Lyric Singleton, she enjoys listening to music, hence her name, also a low-key jokester. Always enjoy getting those biographical tidbits about your favorite players.
because as I said before, you're much more than your stat line than your record. Cassidy drew the foul. So free throws awaiting number 30. Was it in the act of shooting? I didn't quite see it. I see one and one, so it was not. Rhea Cassidy with five points, none in this half, averaging 9.4 a game this season. Empty possession. Panthers will be in the double bonus the rest of the way, but a break for Park Center. Alawunle was cut off in the lane. Park Center tries a three, and Tiana Loy puts it through. So back-to-back -back threes makes it an eight-point game. Timeout, Spring Lake Park. 5.37 to go. Mic'd Up Sports is TSB Television's talk show series. Available on all major podcast platforms, we offer sports figures, past and present, a place to convey stories and adventures on a deeper level than our traditional game coverage. Whether you're a superstar athlete or someone who works behind the scenes, we'd be honored to share your story. If you'd like to be a guest, contact us at The Mike Peden on all major social platforms. Back to action, 52-44, eight point game. Park Center, if they can get another stop, another bucket or two, they might make their way back in this. Such collects the rebound. It will be a side out for Spring Lake Park as Atlantis Brown was able to poke it, unfurl the ball from the grasp of Bella Such. And even though it's a side out for Spring Lake Park, that does stop what would have been a second chance layup. Testy, the fadeaway, short. Back to Spring Lake Park. Lyric Singleton was there, but Brianna Nussbaum spotted the ball first and bounced it off of her. Oh, those offensive rebounds, they can hurt. Here's a three, that's long. And Park Center puts a stop to that. So they do get another stop. Can they convert again? Setting up for another three, it's Lloyd and it's pure. Timing the pass, it's Lloyd. Park Center. What will they do? Nowhere to go. Atlantis Brown trying to make something out of nothing and instead it's going to be another steal and run out for Nussbaum. She has a few of those in this game, 54-47. That could be a backbreaker. Alawunle lobs it back to Singleton. Another three! Rips the net, it's Atlantis Brown. Now the score has not been corrected. Brown with the steal on the layup. Now, if I'm correct, it's 54-52. We have a timeout, and Park Center pumped about this, but I don't think the score is correct on the board. The P announcer is pumped, and all of the Park Center fans are pumped. That's one way to get around the zone, okay. It is 54-52. That's happened a couple of times where they were a bit slow to update the score on the board, and I keep track on my score sheet, but this is a crucial game that Park Center has turned. It looked like Spring Lake Park was going to glide their way home. Park Center making this a two-point game, getting the steal and the layup. Atlantis Brown with a couple 
Uh, big time buckets, a three and the layup. Well, as I was saying earlier, when the threes go in, it's a big help. When they don't, you can run into trouble, but I don't think Park Center is gonna be complaining a whole lot right now. Atlantis Brown, the cotton candy connoisseur, sweetening up the Park Center score. And a little sugar coating, I think would be advisable or welcome for Park Center as they try to complete the comeback. But you see the confidence, the morale, much, much rejuvenated, highly rejuvenated. However you phrase it, the mood much more jovial than it was just a couple minutes ago. Park Center bringing the pressure again. Spring Lake Park was able to break it a few times earlier in the half. Not so much here. 4.02 to go. It was a bit of a slog at times to get here, but we have a photo finish on our hands. Possibly. Park Center not backing down Spring Lake Park. Let's see if they've got enough to reach the finish line first. High low, pass tipped and taken away. Park Center wants the lead. Lloyd gives it to them. The bench going insane, but the game far from over. Three and a half to play, one point game. And Nussbaum, she's got some speed, draws the foul, she'll shoot a pair with Spring Lake Park in the double bonus. Nussbaum's agility, quickness, swift movement has been a godsend for the Panthers in the later stages. 55-54. Oh, Nussbaum missing the front end. Ugh. They've missed a few freebies in the second half. They started strong. They were eight of nine at one point. They've left a few at the line since. Will that haunt them later? We shall see, but we are even at 55. Again, everyone here battling for that second seed, effectively, in Section 5-4-A. But with a tie game, less pressure now for Park Center. They can take their time. Euro step, but Singleton couldn't get past Kesty. Spring Lake Park. They are going to go for the 13-foot pull-up, and getting the friendly bounces. Nussbaum closing in on her season high. She's got 20. Her season high is 22. Alawunle, nothing there, has to go back out. They'll try again, Nussbaum gets around such and makes the most of it. If the first two don't succeed, go for the reset, another sloppy pass. Park Center, they want the three, Bullseye! Tayana Lloyd! With a second half flare, game's still not over though, a missed layup! by Castillo, that could be crucial. Another three, that would have been huge. Oh my goodness, this feels like Super Bowl 58, a game that had a slow start, an exciting finish late. Such draws the foul, that's it for Alawunle. Alawunle will foul out of the game. with 10 points. Tyler Coley signaling his players in there. You get 30 seconds after a player fouls out to make a substitution, so he is treating this like an extra timeout. Two minutes to go. Three-point game. You know what? I guess it's fitting that we have a basketball version of the two-minute warning in a close game. 
If you didn't watch Super Bowl 58, or if you don't remember what happened, it was a slog in the first half, but it built its way to that nail-biting finish. Eventually won in overtime by Kansas City. We're gonna have a similar ending here, I think. Bella Such at the line. She's missed a couple in the second half. So no Miriam Alawunle, she is fouled out. 10 points. Had a tough time against Bella Such in that battle of post players. Offensive rebound, jump ball. Park center with the arrow. Or is, yes, yes. <laughs> Some of the body language, facial expressions, you're always looking to see what the call is. I did see the jump ball signal. So it's Park Center ball with a two point lead. And they've been doing it from the outside. Singleton, wide open baseline. She beats Such, missed, got her own, got it again, and draws the late foul. Lyric Singleton, fearless. She had three white jerseys, if I'm correct. There were three Spring Lake Park players, and Singleton somehow came up with the rebound. A late friend of mine, Matt Bishop, said, though, it's not just about height. Positioning matters too, and Lyric Singleton, the 5'10 wing, with a huge trip at the free throw line. If she makes the next one, it's a two possession game. Singleton, she averages 10.1, 50% free throw shooter. That is her first point of the entire game. Go figure. And Singleton. If there is any time to come up with your first pair of points, this would be it. Two possession game, but still a lot of time remaining. Park Center trying to spring that ball loose. Kesty recovers. Another Singleton. Ah, this is getting insane. I'm on pins and needles and I'm all the way up here. Such entry pass tipped, intercepted. Park Center can drop the hammer here. It's Shafa. I think the Pirates are going to work the clock. They're in the bonus. Oh my goodness. I need that timeout just to catch my breath. Park Center, they trailed by 11 if I was correct, if I'm correct. And Sam is like, uh, well, sure, we'll go with that. <laughs> Sam, a fellow basketball prodigy with his coaching background and all of our chats. You never know what will happen. If Park Center does hang on for the win, I think they're gonna give Tiana Lloyd all the cotton candy she wants, at least until the game on Friday. 105 to go. Park Center, they were having an awfully hard time on the struggle bus from three-point range. And then Lloyd, in the second half, has hit four of them. She has 14 points. A new season high for the senior. And Jalea Diggs, let's not forget about her. She hasn't been as productive. And what do we have here? Oh, the scoreboard. <laughs> the scoreboard turned off. Oh. What else can happen in this game? <laughs> Now, it's not a done deal yet. With 105, Park Center, a bucket here would go a long way. They trail by 11. It looked like they were going to sulk home without a win. Remember, they came into this match winning five straight. Tyler Coley in his first year looking to rejuvenate, revitalize a program with a proud history in recent years, but not much in recent memory. This team went three and 24 last year. That is not a misprint, three and 24. So they've already taken a huge step forward at 11 and 11. And what that could mean moving forward, who knows, but Tyler, Let's not forget what he did for Washburn, giving them a pedestal they hadn't had in girls basketball. Those years with Chase Coley. 
Lucia Renikoff. Jasine Patterson. Kenda Zellner Smith. Some of the other players don't come to mind. I think I heard Tyler Coley say something about scat. Stack, stack, that's the inbound play. This is why I have, Sam, I might need to have you on the wide shot more often. You can explain all this terminology to me. We're having clock issues, that's the problem. I think it has been reset properly now. It was at 105, it should have been 103, and we do get to 103. Singleton with the ball, two possession lead for Park Center. Singleton, driving kick, this for the dagger, yes! Anaya Shafa, her first basket, and the Pirates storming the ship. What happened now? Did we have another clock issue? Shafa. Hits the three. I am lost track. I have no idea what's going on anymore. This is one of the strangest endings I have ever seen involving the clock, but what a comeback here for Park Center if they can hang on. Mic'd Up Sports is TSB Television's talk show series. Available on all major podcast platforms, we offer sports figures, past and present, a place to convey stories and adventures on a deeper level than our traditional game coverage. Whether you're a superstar athlete or someone who works behind the scenes, we'd be honored to share your story. If you'd like to be a guest, contact us at The Mike Peden on all major social platforms. The DJ trying to keep everyone engaged. Well, something must be in the air here tonight to borrow the Phil Collins line because we had some issues with our GoPro over at the baseline. We've had clock issues. I'm wondering, is there any hex? I better go home and see. Spring Lake Park missing the three. Scrum for the rebound, won by the Pirates, and that is going to do it. Park Center, trail by 11. Brick after brick after brick from three-point range. They found their footing. And Tyler Coley is having a rather excitable word with Jalea Diggs. I don't know what was said, but Diggs was 17, Atlantis Brown. Remember, started this run with a couple of back-to-back -back buckets, a three and then a steal and layup. Atlantis started this run. Apropos that she finishes it. Park Center is going to go above 500 for the first time in a long time. Spring Lake Park hits the three. Panthers will call a timeout. That was Rhea Cassidy, but there's not gonna be enough time. 67, 61, 19.3 seconds. In a game that has seen just about everything. We've had some clock issues we've had to work through. Ooh, excuse me. We've had so many, I'm starting to belch out. <laughs> see here. Well, Valentine's Day, I know a day that a lot of folks spend with loved ones. We are spending this on the basketball court. That's the last time out for Spring Lake Park. And for Park Center, Tiana Lloyd, a new season high. Jalea Diggs, not a season high for her, but you have to like the promise out of a group that went three and 24, and they lost a couple of key pieces as well, Naomi Frushan went to Champlin Park, and unfortunately things haven't worked out much better for her there. Helen Ben went over to Coon Rapids, and Park Center played a close one 
76-72, but it was the Cardinals that got the win. Actually, it was a split. Park Center won the first meeting. So, new regime, but confidence, morale, optimism, I think are going to rise exponentially. Spring Lake Park almost got the steal. Newsbomb, heck of an effort by Newsbomb. 20 points, had that steal and run out, game down pad. Looks like it's gonna come up a bit short, but an impressive game. Spring Lake Park almost had a couple of steals there, but you gotta grasp it firmly as Patrick Starr discussed in Super Bowl 58 on the Nickelodeon coverage. <laughs> For Sam and I, this ring shades of the Holy Angels Duluth Marshall game that went to double overtime and took a little while to reach the finish. 67-61. Well, a reminder that if you're watching this on the TSB Television YouTube channel, our next game will be Hopkins and Wyzetta in a game that should be a whole lot of fun. Hopkins. And Wyzetta, two blue bloods. They meet each other in section six, 4A every year for that state tournament title. Park Center, they've been doing this without Miriam Alawunle, who fouled out a little while ago. Diggs with 17 points. Lloyd with 14. Harmony Mayberry hit a few trays. She has nine. Atlantis Brown with 10. And then Singleton and Shafa getting a couple of big scores. Singleton. Her only points came at the free throw line, but they were big ones. And for Spring Lake Park, I think they're gonna look back. They had the win, I don't wanna say locked up, but pretty close to it. Park Center just got hopped from three point range and Spring Lake Park wasn't able to adapt in time. 6.9, Park Center does have one timeout left if they have trouble with the inbound. Lloyd is just going to ride it out in the backcourt. It's a final. It took us a little while. But a sweet comeback effort by Park Center culminates in a 67-61 win. Diggs with 17. Lloyd a season high 14. And plenty of help all around from three-point range. We'll try to get a word with some of the Park Center players before we call it a night. This is high school girls basketball. Park Center goes above 500 with a 67-61 win. I'm joined by Tiana Lloyd and Jalea Diggs of Park Center. Tiana, that was one heck of a second half surge if I ever saw one. It resulted in a new season high for you and it gives you a win when it seemingly looked like uh, you were on the ropes. You were committed to the three once you and your teammates started to knock down a few late in the second half. How did that revitalize your confidence? Um, after hitting them, like, I really just started feeling it, and my teammates were doing a good job at finding me the ball again while I was hot, so I was able to keep producing for my team and getting us up in the game. And you were down by 11, I think, before that comeback. Atlantis Brown, I think, started it with a three and then a steal and a layup to really make this a game again. Uh, when you knocked down a three, I believe it was you that gave Park Center the first lead of the second half. What did that do to electrify this team? Um, it just gave us all the confidence to keep shooting, and once we come together as a team and we're all able to produce, all of us just come together and we're able to just persevere through all the adversity. You're a senior, and if I'm correct, you've been here all throughout high school, so you were on the team la last year that had a total of three wins. With this comeback win, you are now a game over 500. I know you like to go farther, but to be part of a team that is on the upswing, how much does that mean for you in your senior year after years of being on the struggle bus? 
Um, it feels really, really good. Like I've been at Park Center for five years now, and we've been having a little shaky season for the past two years. But this year, I feel like we all have really good chemistry, and we're all really coming together as a team. And with that, is really helping us um, get these wins, and we're actually playing together and really have good team chemistry. So, yeah. And would you say that chemistry extends to Jalea over here? Yes, definitely. Well, Jalea, you may not be the tallest player out there, but uh, saying that Ronnie Porter and her family have used hard over height, I don't know if you've heard that phrase, but you embodied that tonight, 17 points. And you help Park Center stick around early on, but to come back from a couple of 11-point deficits, what does this mean for how much this team has come together? Um, it means a lot, especially like what what happened like last year, like throughout our season. It means a lot to like have just have this team and like have this energy where we keep going and never give up. How did you tap into that late in the second half? Again, Park Center looked like they were in big trouble. All of a sudden, they get a few threes to drop, and then you see that deficit turn into a lead. How do you think uh, that perseverance was on display tonight? Um, I feel like the bench energy was um, a big play in that um when we have energy on the bench like the whole team the chemistry just goes flowing and yeah and what is it like in those huddles when you took the lead and i remember there was a timeout and everyone was jumping up and down as if you had won the game i know you knew your work wasn't done yet yeah. but after things were kind of quiet or rather a bit you know down so to speak in terms of energy it shot up to 11 i think you might have broken the energy meter um Wait, what was the question again? I'm just that energy. Just uh, when you took the lead, everyone's jumping up and down. <laughs> I just, I'm just curious, you, what goes into that? How does that feed into the confidence, the chemistry this team has, where they get excited after taking the lead like you did? Um, it just gives us more confidence. You know, just having like your teammates having your back just wants you to play more better and you know um, do what you got to do. And what are you looking forward to most with you being a senior? What uh, what's next for you um after this after the season after you're done with basketball um like just after the season or like after high school you can answer it however you want college plans sport plan what's next for you because uh you've been through a lot with Adalia mckenzie those lean years and now this resurgence oh uh, um i'm trying to figure out what i want to do next i'm still trying to figure it out um still looking into the different colleges and stuff like that. I've been talking to a couple coaches. And after the season, just going to focus on my track and field career and focus on that. All right. Before we go, do you want to say hi to anybody? Hey, Mom. <laughs> hi, Mom. <laughs> well, hi, Mom. Uh, some of them might be uh, getting this on their phones, too. But congrats on the win. A heck of a comeback. And I hope you ride this wave of positivity into Friday. Thank you. Thank you. Tiana Lloyd and Julia Diggs, that wraps up our coverage here from Park Center. For the rest of our crew, I'm Mike Beaton. Thank you for watching.